<laughs> it saw me. That is freaky. <laughs> So I'm here with Samuel Roth, who is an assistant professor in the math department at Silesian University, which is right behind us. Yep, that's yeah. where I go to work every day. Yeah. And Samuel is not Czech. Actually, we're both from the great state of Michigan. And I'm from Detroit. Samuel's from Grand, Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids, right here. Grand Rapids. And Detroit. So I got to kind of flip it. So maybe your hand. All right. Yeah, Detroit down here on the Canadian border. And we're here, we're working on a project. I'm here to give a couple talks. And you know, this is one of the nice things about being a mathematician. You go to all kinds of interesting places and work with interesting people and give talks. Yeah, Bill's been here for a week. Uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to write a paper together. We'll see, mm -hmm. don't know. Yeah. But today's Saturday, so we wanna get out and see the city and show it to you today too. Yeah. So we'll walk around the old town. Maybe Samuel will jump in the ice water. We'll see what happens. I mean, God knows. That might be an interesting shot for you. That is a lot of mannequins. In oh my God, that's like a serial killer. Well, we'll get to see where one of the serial killers of Opava lives. And check this out. Oh this my God. The statuary on the tree here. So these are feet, right? Now Opava are those- the town of like a hundred random statues. Well, either are these like real feet or just like statues? Or like, what is this? That's a statue. It's, it's okay. art, it's our art. Oh, yeah, it's like serial killer art. Let's check out the other stuff. You know, this is the thing with some of these places. Like, they look really, you know, they're, they're just kind of nice and quiet on the surface. And then, like, you dig a little bit and you find some strange stuff. You know, I'll, I'll be going to Ukraine later, but that's even, that's even worse in a sense. Okay, let's look at... Oh, my gosh, you need to take a still shot of that. Yeah, what is this? Yeah, it definitely needs a still shot. Mannequin storage. Okay, so how many people are like, holy shit, oh my god. <laughs> and, 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 and here's what's even worse. Let's look at the street name. Horny Namaste. Oh, come on. <laughs> like, Don't even go there. It like, means the upper square, Bill. So Sam, you were telling me that a couple famous people made their way through Opava. Yeah, probably the two most famous people who have been here are Gregory Mendel, who I think studied here, and the local high school is named after him. And what did he do? He studied genetics, yep. dominant and recessive traits. So very important. So you, that way you know, for example, if your child's going to be a ginger. And who else came through here? Beethoven. Ludwig van Beethoven came here. So not the, by, the dog, right? No, not the dog, <laughs> the composer, and not by plan. Mm -hmm. He was visiting the castle, which we're going to go see sometime later in the week. Mm -hmm. And he was staying with the local nobleman there, the Prussian nobleman who ruled at the time. And they got in a fight, and he did not want to play music for the French soldiers, Napoleon soldiers, who were walking through that particular day. And so the lord of the castle locked him in his room. Mm -hmm. He escaped through the window and walked eight kilometers to Opava and stayed here for the night and then left and went on his way. Is he the one that left those uh, bodies in the window? I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. It kind of so anyway, we'll probably see it later today, but there's this house that's like Beethoven stayed here is written on the wall, and we're so proud of it. And the fact is he stayed here one night because he yeah. got in a fight with his friend and had yeah. nowhere else to go. So we're going to be looking at the town hall now. Okay. And did Beethoven stay here or not? No, I don't think so. He didn't have any sort of fight with anyone here? No. The town hall is not as old. It's the original location of the town hall, but it burned down and got rebuilt a couple times in its history. So this one, you can see the date at the top is 1618. Is on, written on the tower up there. Let's see if I we don't can know if see that's that. Visible or not. I think maybe if we zoom where where above the that? clocks, way up at the top. I think it's slightly visible. So that's still very very old, but not as old as the rest of the town. So, and we have some sort of globe over here as well. Now this globe is very important for Opava. During the summer, this is a fountain, and we keep it cool because it represents the sun. And Opava is the home of a scale model of the solar system. So this is the sun in the middle. And as we walk around, you'll see some of the other planets to scale, both in terms of the distance from the sun and in terms of their size. So some of them are really tiny. Huh. So, so if is we it... come over here, we'll see Mercury. That oh, there's Mercury. Let's, let's, let's see Mercury, yeah. Because I know, yeah. like, 
Do they consider Pluto to be pl a planet or not? Pluto is, yeah, when the solar system was built, Pluto was still a planet. So Pluto is 10 kilometers out at the Arboretum. We won't make it there today. Oh, good. So they actually did it to scale. Because yes, a lot of these solar system things, you know, they don't. Uh... Mars is front in front of the Math Institute. I don't know if you noticed it there yet, but you walked past Mars every day. Oh, I know. I didn't notice it. Yeah. What about the um, planet X, like this thing, like this, uh, they say it's a black hole. Did you hear about this? Is it in the solar system? Okay, so I'm not joking. So apparently, like, you know, no, nobody knows, but there was a paper published recently that said it's possible that there is a so-called, you know, extra planet out in ninth planet. And it's probably not a black hole, but it's actually, it actually possibly could be. In the solar system? Yes, yeah, I'm not joking. So this is... No, we don't have any black holes in Opava. This is Mercury. This little guy right here. Oh, wow. Yeah, that really puts it... Yeah, so the sun was over there in this tiny, tiny, tiny little ball. It's like like almost nothing. Yeah, you can probably even get both in the view at the same time. It's, yeah, it's pretty we, cool standing here and looking at both. Yeah, you can see that over there. And then down we have Mercury. And here is Earth. Yes, uh, I can't tell you exactly where I live, but somewhere on here. Somewhere in there. Yeah, they don't have the continents quite made out. And just for a matter of scale, here is the moon. Right over here. So that's kind of interesting because, you know, this is the furthest anyone's ever been. And you see just even like Mars. Turns out Mars is way over there by that building yeah. and so that's going to be really difficult to send someone over there. Yeah. One of the things you can do as you're standing in the main square here in Opava is look around at the buildings and try to guess which ones were built under communism. Okay. That, that so, shouldn't be too difficult. Give it a shot, I? Bill. Um, that one looks like it was probably built under communism. It was and it was refinished this year so it kind of looks nice but yeah, this is a block structure. This is a good point because then we have this very nice looking building over here that was clearly not definitely written. predates yeah. communism mm -hmm. and we know that this one here was certainly before communism because we know it was from 1618 yeah and this over here yeah definitely from communism like yeah everything. that shopping center like every year there's a citizens movement to tear it down and another, another citizens movement to protect our heritage and so it's still there okay i'm gonna say this maybe this is gonna sound strange but i actually like the ugly communist stuff because it can be so ugly and terrible that there can be a certain beauty to it like i went inside that grocery store over there and there's this like you know store for like clothing up there and there's these like ugly mannequins and weird stairs and like it's t to me it's actually kind of beautiful mm -hmm. like not in the same way that like this thing is beautiful yeah this is our but... theater this was built rebuilt in 1908 after a major fire yeah so pre-communism but it's still pre-war pre-world so. war one back still yeah. under austro-hungarian empire so opava was not really a czech place before world war one Oh, yeah. It was well, Austro-Hungarian Empire. Yeah, I would love to. I could definitely imagine retiring like in one of those corner apartments with this view of the square. Yeah, would you rather retire in suburban America or one of these places? And Oh, definitely here, without a question. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look at, you the know. The food is better. You can get everything you need in walking distance. That's one of the nice things, because you, you, you don't really need a like, car In suburban anywhere. America, can you walk to live concerts and theater and the movies and the mall anywhere? Can you imagine a place with all those things in walking distance? So Samuel just informed me that all the way up here is a coffee shop. And there's some freaky angel up there as well. So imagine you can go and have your coffee and look down on all this niceness here. And I don't really see anything communist around here, or is there? I don't think so. This is this is the heart of medieval Opava. So these yeah. buildings, if they didn't get torn down, have been here for for ages. Did you go in the rainbow shop? No. This is this is they the have rainbow the shop. Most What's in here? Random selection of like dollar store stuff, like a floor of clothes, a floor of uh, home decorations, picture frames. So this is, oh, this is, okay, I definitely have to go in here because, I mean, this is so tacky, like, from the outside. Yeah, and I just... it's tacky on the inside, too. Okay, and this is probably closed. Probably. 
Yeah, because I really want to see what's in here now. Uh, closed since December 27. Oh no. And if you need to return something, you can go to that address. Sorry. Oh, that's too bad. I think they're out of business. I love dollar store like things. It you know, is that's part of the. It's been here since I came. That's where I got my yeah. first pants when I moved to Opava. <laughs> so where you got the wedding ring? No, the wedding <laughs> ring I bought at a mall in America. Oh. Yeah. Czech people don't really buy a lot of expensive jewelry. They're very happy to get like a just a symbolic ring because mm -hmm. the meaning is more important than the cost. Yeah, I, I think I, I agree with this sort of idea. I actually saw a Czech wedding where they exchanged big plastic rings like you would find in a Cracker Jack box. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, what is this? This is poetry in the park. Push the button and you will hear one of these famous Czech poets. Today we get... Radek Friedrich. Mouchnutím nárazníků údolí pro tuto chvíli zemřelo. Pak se vše rozeznělo znovu. In that moment he died and somebody said goodbye to everything again to some local uh, buses, the coffee to go which he got in his car, and so on. I think I'll lose my ability to translate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, actually poetry doesn't really translate, so there's not much point. That's true. This park is cool. This is, yeah, this looks like an and interesting playground. And I'll buy playground. you free fries if you can walk across that, like, rolling balance beam without falling off. Um, well, I can try it right now. Let's see what happens. Let's see how well. Imagine it's like an icy river underneath you as you're walking across, okay? Oh my god. I see little kids come out here and they can do it. But I've never seen anyone who weighs more than about 50 kilograms make it across. And I am 102 kilograms today, so. I'm gonna try one more time. I don't think this is gonna work. I think this is actually gonna be really difficult. Yeah, this is. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, there's no chance. Oh, I, there's no way I can do this. No, I'm a fan of this. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, the whole thing like teeters back and forth as you go. Yeah, I like this. Nice, Let's nice. go see the birds. Okay, yeah, so why don't you um, tell us about these birds? These things scared me. Okay. Well, like we said, Opava is the city of a hundred random statues. So we're going to find the random bird statues. And Opava, the middle three letters, P-A-V, mean peacock in Czech. So the city has kind of adopted birds and the peacock as its symbol. Uh, these do not exactly look like peacocks to me. They I don't, don't look at all like will. peacocks to me. I don't know that they look like any kind of particular bird, just a bird. Well, the type that are going to steal your soul is what they look like. Oh. Because in the middle of the night, like these things, they have these glowing eyes and their heads literally turn towards you. Uh -huh. It's like some sort of like gatekeepers in some like fantasy sci-fi movie where you like, they're going to zap you when you walk through. And here we have like the peacock slide where I would never send my kid. Like you climb the ladder into his mouth <laughs> with the pointy teeth and then you slide out between his wings and you're like, I survived. Oh man. Well, there was something weird I saw in a kill Germany. It was on the French German border. It was a mosquito slide. Ouch. I'm not joking. You climb up and you go down like the mosquito, the part that drains the blood. Ouch. <laughs> I love Germany. There's all kinds of stuff like that in some of these towns. Yeah, so this is <laughs> the peacock slide, but I think far scarier are these birds. And you've got it moving its head right now, if you can catch it. Yeah. Me and my pal. Yeah, see that? He's just saying hello. Now imagine, you know, I came here late at night and I'm bringing my luggage and I look up and I see these things, not like this particular one, but these two, you see, and these eyes, they glow at night, and this is like one of these, I don't know, like almost myths where you have these two things guarding the passage between. This is like the main entrance as you come from the train station and walk to downtown, you pretty much have to go past. Yeah, so if you come if, if you come to Opava, there's no airport here, you gotta take the train, probably. Yeah. And uh, the first thing that greets you are these, and 
Yeah, welcome to Opava. <laughs> It freaky. saw me. That is freaky. <laughs> it saw me. It's gonna steal my soul or I don't know what. This one's really active lately. Just constantly turning. I think it's hungry. <laughs> see, see, it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we have a nice building here at least. Yeah, this yeah. is the old monastery. Yeah. I don't believe it's an active monastery at this point. There was a Christmas market there where I went shopping this year. Oh, nice. nice. That was my first time inside the building. So we at least have some sort of view of the park. We have the uh, crazy peacock slide and the birds watching over. Sam found something really interesting in this park right next to these scary birds. Yeah, we've got this like free library for kids and it's got Walt Disney's Merry Christmas, but it's not <laughs> going to be a very Merry Christmas with this book. <laughs> they left like the cover. And took the pages. Like, who does that? Like, what's the? Oops. Like, what's what's the reasoning for that? But yeah, you can um, yeah library in the park in Opava with books with oh, missing pages. And a book how to become a poker pro. Is that about like hustling or something? Like, you know, it's per like... pretend not to know how to play and then start betting more money and then you maybe. I don't know. Check advice on playing Texas Hold'em. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can practice your check reading comprehension in this, uh, this park. The destruction of Chernobyl. Oh, yes. I'll have to go back there sometime this summer, maybe. Have you been to Chernobyl? Yeah, I was there about uh, three years ago, three and a half years ago. Hmm. It's before they put the new, uh, new safe confinement over the reactor four. Oh yeah, the freaky dolls and stuff. Yeah, you need to go. Yeah, I was. I have a selfie in front of that sign. Wow. So. Creepy up. I probably never did before 9/11. I didn't fly till I was in high school. And I think that started in 2002. I see. Yeah, my um, my first time flying was um, in. Let me think. It was. Uh, I was like 11. I think I went to 10 or 11. I went to Los Angeles with my family for vacation. Okay. And, um, you know, like uh, Disneyland, Universal Studios, all this sort of stuff. And then, like, I hardly, I hardly started flying until all this math stuff started picking up, like, just an occasional time. Hmm. And now it's, like, all the time, but it's kind of the exception that I took the bus or train to get here. You know? So do you like that about math, that you get to travel a lot? I do. It's it's kind of nice. It's it's tiring, but I mean, it's why I'm doing this this nonsense with the the gimbal and the vlogging and all that, you know, because why not? But um, yeah, I mean, you get all these types of adventures. You get to go to these places that, like, you know, you hear about on TV but don't even seem real. Um, you know, I mean, like going to Chernobyl, for example. You know, I went to Chernobyl entirely because I was there for math. Hmm. And oh, you know, maybe I'll go back next time I'm in Kiev. Hmm. I'm going to stop and get fries here. All right. <laughs>